One of my favorite new features in Webflow in 2023 is the introduction of this visibility and user access uh, settings panel under the settings menu for every element. Now this feature was originally designed at least partially for the purposes of Webflow's memberships platform. It allows you to choose which elements are visible based on login or logout state. And at least originally, it was intended to also support the ability to have conditional visibility on elements based on their the user's uh, access groups in memberships, what their access level was. But a lot of people are confused about how this particular setting is different from the, the style setting where I can mark something as display none, as layout. And there's actually some very big differences or two big differences. And I wanted to cover those today because I found this, this understanding this distinction to be an incredibly powerful tool in site design. So let's start with the style panel here. The layout options that I get for any element include block, they include flex, you've got uh, CSS grids, you've got inline blocks, plain text, and then you also have the ability to hide things. And just like all settings, these are breakpoint specific, which means that using this display none setting as a layout option, I can make breakpoint specific decisions on which elements I want to appear. Let's suppose I've got this title element selected here, and let's suppose I only want it to appear on desktops and tablets, but I do not want it to appear on mobile devices in landscape or in portrait view. So what I can do is have it visible on desktop, and then as I cascade down through the breakpoints, I can choose to then change that display setting to none at the mobile landscape breakpoint, which will then cascade down to mobile portrait. I now have my heading visible on desktop and tablet, but not on my mobile devices. But what if I actually want the opposite to happen? What if I only want that title to appear on mobile devices? Well, I can do that too. Here at the desktop level, I will mark it hidden initially. And then I will go down to my mobile landscape. And at that point, I'm going to change its visibility to block. And that's going to cascade down to mobile portrait as well. I now have a heading that I can control exactly where it appears at which breakpoints. And that's an incredibly useful capability. But it's important to understand <clears throat> that no matter what, that element is always in the page, <clears throat> even when I cannot see it. And that makes a big difference for developers who are searching for and selecting elements in the page. It makes a big difference for certain third-party tools, such as uh, FinSuite's filtering, which will see hidden elements as well and still try to apply its filtering logic to them. So any kind of development, any kind of extension, any kind of source code that is looking at your page content and is making decisions and making manipulations and counting things and performing DOM modifications. All of that is going to be affected by everything that is in the page. And this is always going to be in the page, whether I see it or not. And this is the big difference between the display none style and the visibility hidden setting. If I mark something as hidden, it is completely suppressed. The suppression, instead of happening just in CSS where it's, the browser's just told not to display it, the suppression actually happens server side. So it is not in the page at all. If I publish this page, I'm not gonna find that element and I'm not gonna find it at any breakpoint. This is not breakpoint specific. Settings are not breakpoint specific. It's gonna apply everywhere. Now. There is a reason that this is very, very useful. Very often when you are building and managing a site, there are certain changes that you will want to make. You might want to redesign a section or try a new footer, or you might want to change out a custom code block. Maybe sometimes you want it, maybe sometimes you don't. Well, hiding it is going to do nothing. 
that code block will still be there. It will still execute. But if I switch that to visibility hidden, it's not just invisible, it is gone from the page and it will not execute at all. One of the places that I find this most useful is when I'm doing redesigns of a site. If I'm taking an entirely new template and applying it to a site and making major modifications and I want to redesign a hero, if I want this hero to go away so that it is no longer dead weight in the generated page, there's no more interactions running in it, there's no more source code affecting it, it's not getting picked up by search engines for SEO purposes, I want it gone but maybe I don't want to delete it yet. Maybe I'm still in the migration process and I'm testing something out. So I could build my new section. Let's actually do that here. Let's create a new version of this section and I've made a whole bunch of changes and this is version 2.0, whatever. It's different. The heading is different. And I want this old one to go away, but if I delete it, I'm gonna to have to go to backups and restore them if I wanna get it back or if I'm gonna pull some content from it or I'm gonna to have to copy it to another page. I'm gonna end up with lots of cloned pages that are marked as draft. It's an ugly process. I don't need to do that. All I need to do is go to settings, mark it as hidden, and it is gone. From the perspective of the web browser, it never existed. It is not in the page at all. Now I will say one thing here which is that I really do wish, and I hope, that Webflow at some point will differentiate in the indication here in the navigator. You could see that marking something as visibility hidden has the exact same symbol in styling as when I mark something as, uh, as display none. Now this happens to be visibility hidden as well. It's an element that I took out, so I didn't want it but I didn't necessarily want to delete it yet. I wasn't really sure. So I just suppressed it completely from the page. I use that quite a bit, but if I take an element here and I mark this as display none, it looks exactly the same. There's no way to tell the difference. I think ideally the indication I would like to see for sections that are fully suppressed is a second line through the eye and then probably a light gray treatment to the text itself. So it is very, very visually clear that's suppressed, that's suppressed, that's suppressed, that's just hidden using display none, but the element is still there. It's still part of the page. There's a big difference there. And I'm really hopeful that we'll see that at some point. But this feature, it's something that you'll find incredibly valuable. Anytime you're making a change, you don't need to rip out the old elements permanently while you're halfway through the design process. One other place that I use this quite frequently is when I'm dealing with large scale interactions around things like pop-ups. Let's suppose we've got a holiday hours pop-up. It is right here under the nav, but we only show it around Christmas time. What about the rest of the year when we don't want that to appear? Now, certainly you could do some JavaScript and you could do some work to set uh, you know, a, a date range when that pop-up will appear and a date range when it won't. But in many cases, this is something you just wanna be able to turn on and off manually, depending on what you're wanting to do. Now, visibility hidden gives you that ability. I can take that pop-up and I can just make it go away 100% out of the page, there are no interactions running, it is just gone. And that makes things just so much easier from an administrative standpoint. It's a feature that I hope you get as much use out of as we are.